I'm very excited about today's video. Today we're gonna to talk about how to make a rag doll. I've wanted to do this project for quite a while, so I'm hoping that you'll like it as much as I do. One of my favorite things about the rag dolls is deciding what fabric to use. So you can mix and match as you like for the different doll pieces and for clothing. Um, and so this is what I've decided on for my doll today. I've got some muslin here that I'm gonna use for the doll skin. I have two different colors of cotton that I'm going to use for the legs and for the dress and body. You're also gonna want, in addition to cotton fabric, some yarn for the hair and felt for the shoes. Something that you can add in addition to your fabric is woven interfacing. And whether or not you need this really depends on the thickness of your fabric. So my two cottons here that I'm gonna use for the dress and for the legs are quite thick and I don't think they need any reinforcing. But the muslin that I'm going to be using for the doll skin is quite thin and I don't wanna be able to see the polyfill through that. So I'm going to use the woven interfacing on the back of my muslin and the interfacing I'm using here is the Pelon SF 101. So let's get started. Once you've selected the fabrics that you're going to be using to make your doll, your next step is to cut out the pieces. So you can go to my website, the link's below, to get a free pattern for how to make the rag doll. After you've cut your pieces, we've got the two dress pieces, two body pieces, our shoes, legs, head, and arms. A few things to be careful of. On the arms and head and at the top of the dress, you want to be sure to transfer the markings. On the pattern piece, you'll notice that there are some markers that represent different key points. So you'll notice the centers are marked on the pattern, so you'll want to transfer that to your fabric. Same with on the arm piece, there are two markers on the sides that indicate where to leave the opening for when you stuff. So you wanna make sure that you transfer those key points onto your pieces and it will help you align things as you're working with it. You'll want to mark the centers on the head, the body, and the top of the dress, and you'll want to mark the openings on the arms. Also on the arms, be careful, um, you need two left pieces and two right pieces to make sure that you end up with a left and right side arm for your doll. So don't cut them all the same direction. You're gonna cut two and two reversed. You can view a cut layout with the pattern that will help you with how to lay out your pieces so you get the correct position when cutting. Let's go ahead and begin assembling the doll. Let's start by assembling the leg. So you need two leg pieces to make one leg. On one side, the, the side that you'd like to be the front of the leg, go ahead and place the shoe piece that has the dip in the front. So this will be the front of the shoe. This shoe style is like a little ballerina slipper um, and so it's got a dip in the front. The back shoe will go on the other piece. And what you want to make sure of when you apply these pieces is that you want to make sure that the tops are aligned because when we take these two pieces and put them together, we want those edges to meet. So we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch around the edge of these pieces with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, part of it on the curved edge won't show later on our project, but where you stitch around here, around the opening, and around this top edge will be visible. So if it's important to you, you'll want to make sure that you switch to coordinating thread because you will see those stitches on your final doll. We're gonna be stitching the shoe in place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is really small, so take care to make sure you're going through all of the layers. And we're using a stitch length of 2.5. Thank you. 
I now have the shoes attached to all four legs. So now we're gonna put the legs together. So you're going to match a front shoe to a back shoe and you're gonna lie them right sides together. Take your piece with the front shoe and lay it right side up. Lay the piece with the back shoe right side down on top of it. And then we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch around three sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna leave this edge open for turning and stuffing, but we're gonna sew along those edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. The legs are now sewn and we're ready to go ahead and trim this so that we can flip it. When you take something small like this and you flip it inside out, all of this fabric that's on the outside has to fit in this small space here. So we cut clips to help it turn easier and better. So I'm gonna cut some clips around the curved edges. I'm especially gonna make sure I clip um, at the corners by the ankles. If you have pinking shears, they also work really good for this. Uh, you can kind of cut the seam allowance in half. Just take care, no matter which method that you choose, whether you're cutting clips by hand or using pinking shears, just take care not to trim your seam allowance stitches. If you get into the basting stitches a bit, that's not a problem but for your quarter inch seam allowance, take care not to cut those stitches. My favorite tool to use to turn plush pieces is a pair of hemostats. So I'm just gonna slide them down to the bottom, grip the edge of the fabric, and slide it over. You can then use the hemostats to turn out the edges. Okay, if you don't have hemostats, there are other ways you can do this. Uh, one way is to take the end near the foot and tuck the toe in. Kind of start rolling it like you would a pair of socks. and create like a little dip that looks like a little bowl there. And I'm gonna turn this using a pencil. Now this is an unsharpened pencil, you don't want to get poked. But I'm just gonna put the edge of my pencil in the dip, slide it on over, Just like with the hemostats, it does take a little wiggling to get it started, but eventually you'll get the end. And your legs turned. Use a turning tool to help press out all the edges. You do want to make sure that it's nice and fully turned. So our legs are now turned, so let's grab the polyfill. One thing that I've learned about making any type of plush is that I always underestimate the amount of polyfill I need. If I think it's gonna take one handful, I'll make myself grab two or three, just because I always end up needing more than I thought. So it's amazing how much polyfill can fit in something small like this. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing you're gonna want to do is make sure you fluff your polyfill. So sometimes it can get quite matted, which would make your plush lumpy um, and kind of unattractive. So uh, take the time to fluff it. So this just means that you rip it into tiny small pieces. If you've ever been to like Build-A-Bear or something, you'll notice that when they have 
the polyfill that they're stuffing the animals with, it's in tiny little pieces that float around in that little air box. Um, and that's because these small pieces just fill it so much easier than big clumps of polyfill. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stuff the leg. And again, if you don't have hemostats to work with, um, a wooden spoon works great too. I usually start by filling the toe really, really well um, and then working out. Okay, when you're filling up the leg, you don't want to go all the way to the top because this is gonna have to be sewn into the doll. So leave yourself um, about 3 eighths of an inch to a half an inch that you can work with um, later. One thing you wanna do when stuffing your legs is to compare the two. You do want them to look the same. You don't wanna have one leg that's really fat and one leg that's really skinny. So when you're done, look at both of them, make sure they look like they're about the same size um, before you move on. Up next, I'm gonna work on the face. I'm gonna add my eyes to my doll. Now you don't have to do this now. This is something you can do when your doll is complete if you prefer, but I like to do it in advance. Um, preferably, this is best done with fabric paint. So if you have black fabric paint, that's a great way to add the eyes. I am currently out of all of my black fabric paint, so I'm gonna use a high class Sharpie. But I find that it works pretty good. You just wanna make sure that you test your fabric because sometimes uh, the Sharpies can bleed and you don't want that to happen on your final project. So I'm just gonna line up my fabric with my pattern piece and I'm gonna make sure that the centers are aligned and you can see through my fabric, you can see the eyes. If your fabric is too dense to see through, you can hold it up to the light or you can just place your eyes uh, wherever you like. But I'm just gonna draw two circles for the eyes. Since my Sharpie does bleed just a little bit, I'm making them just a bit smaller than my pattern. But I now have the eyes added for my doll. This one looks like it bled a little bit more, so it made a little larger circle, so I'm gonna increase the size of this one just a smidge. but fabric paint is a better option if you have it. Okay, so now that the eyes have been added, I now have a front face and the back of my head. So I now know that this is my front of my doll. So let's go ahead and join the head to the body. Lay your head piece right side up and take your body piece. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you mark the centers on the body piece. So here is the top center. And here is the bottom center for my doll body. So I'm gonna find the bottom center of the face and I'm going to find the top center of the body. And I'm gonna flip it and place them right sides together, lining up that point. And I'm gonna pin it in place. And I'm going to stitch along this straight edge. I'm gonna stitch all the way across that body piece with a quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna repeat this process for the back of the head and body. Um, there's just one thing that I like to do first. When we attach 
the legs to our body. We're going to leave an opening down here at the bottom that we're going to have to slip stitch. So before I attach the body, what I like to do is mark my stitch line. So just on the bottom here of the body, I'm going to cut out the pattern piece at the stitch line. Now you don't have to do this. This is optional. I just find that it helps me. So I'm going to turn my body piece that's going to be on the back right side up. I'm going to center my pattern piece. And using a marking tool that I can erase later or that won't be visible, I'm going to trace my stitch line. This is just going to give me a little guide for when I slip stitch in the future. Once that's marked, go ahead and attach the body to the head just as you did before. The head pieces are now attached to the body pieces and I'm going to press the seam allowances open. You can do this uh, with an iron or just with your fingers. We're ready to attach the legs. So find the front body piece of your doll and identify the bottom center of the body. Now you're going to take one of your leg pieces this is the front of the leg, the one that has the dip on the shoe. We're going to place it right sides together. So the front of the shoe will be touching the right side of the body piece. So you should be looking at the back of the shoe. You're going to align the leg piece with the bottom of the body so that the side of the leg hits your center mark and go ahead and pin it in place. Repeat with the other leg. Make sure the front of the foot is touching the body. Now you may notice that the body piece curves a bit. You don't want to curve the legs. You want them to be going in a straight line. And now we're going to go ahead and we are going to stitch the legs in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. When you're doing this step, you can use a triple stitch for added strength or go over it more than once for added strength as well. Um, I've already basted mine in place and I'm stitching over it again for added strength. You do want to take care, make sure that the fabric underneath is laying flat. The legs are now attached to my doll. Next, I'm going to take my back body piece and I'm going to lay it right side down on top of the current body piece. I'm going to take great care to make sure I align these seam allowances and I'm going to pin in place. When you pin, Make sure to have a pin placed on either side of the legs. This is where you're going to leave your opening to turn and stuff. I'm going to stitch around the doll with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to start at this green pin. I'm going to stitch all the way around and I'm going to stop at the white pin leaving an opening here. And as you sew, be careful since there are a lot of curves you want to take your time and when you get to this point here when your needle hits the seam you're going to want to make sure you lift your foot up, put your needle down, turn and continue on. We've stitched around the body of the doll, so let's clip the curves so that we can flip it right side out. 
Again, you can use pinking shears or just regular scissors. This has a lot of curves, so I'm going to use my pinking shears. Be careful not to trim where you're going to slip stitch. Also, even when I use my pinking shears, I find that they don't always get the most important spot, which is right here next to where the neck bends. So you're going to want to make sure you get a good clip there. Because that's the sharpest point. But again, take care not to cut your stitches. Now let's go ahead and turn the doll right side out. Next, before we fill it, we're going to work on the dress. Take one of your dress pieces. Along the top edge, along the neckline, we're going to finish that edge. Fold this under about a quarter of an inch or a little bit less, and then stitch it in place with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're going to do the same to the other side. The top edge should now be finished on your dress pieces. Go ahead and place them right sides together. And we're going to stitch down the two sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. We've sewn the side seams on our dress and we're ready to start preparing the hem. So what you can do is you can take your pattern piece and you can trim the bottom edge to the hem guide. Remember we've already finished the top edge so I'm going to align the top edge with the stitch line on my pattern. You should find that your pattern is about a half an inch from the edge of your fabric. And I'm just going to draw myself a quick reference line. along that edge. And I'm going to do so on both sides. Okay, so I now have a hem turning guide. You can also, to help you with the lay of the dress, you can finger press these side seams open. If you have teeny tiny ironing tools, you can go ahead and press it with your iron, but I don't, so I'm just going to finger press. And then for my hem, I'm going to turn up the hem as I go. Normally, if I was hemming an actual dress, I would do a double fold hem. So I'd fold it once, fold it twice, and then stitch in place. Um, with the doll dress, I found that that's just a little bit too bulky. So I'm just going to fold once and I'm going to fold it as I go. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to fold up the edge of my dress to touch my guideline. So I used a heat erase pen. I got to be a little careful otherwise I'll erase with the heat of my fingers. But I'm just going to turn up a little to touch the line and stitch. So turn up a little to touch the line and stitch. Turn up a little to touch the line and stitch. And I'm just going to fold it as I sew. So let's head to the sewing machine and hem the dress. For this step I find it's helpful to turn the dress right side out. I also like to start at a side seam. So I'm going to find one of my side seams. I'm going to fold up the hem to touch that side seam. And you can pin or clip this in place if you find it helps you. And that's where I'm going to start my hem. And I'm sewing with a seam allowance that's about in between a quarter of an inch and an eighth of an inch. And again, I'm just going to do it in little sections and I'm going to fold as I go. So you'll see that I stop a lot. Now 
Now that the hem's been stitched, I am going to actually press the hem in place. I'm also going to take the opportunity to press those side seams open as much as I can. And there's our dress. The dress that we're adding to the doll um, in this pattern is not removable. Uh, this dress is going to stay attached to the doll. So we're actually going to put this on before we stuff it. So choose the side of the dress that you would like to be the front, lay your doll right side up, and we're actually going to slide the doll through the dress. So just get a grip on the head from that top opening. And slide it on through. Let's assemble the arms. You need two arm pieces, a right and a left, and make sure that you've marked the opening placement. Take the two arm pieces and place them right sides together. I like to put a pin to mark the placements of the opening. So I'm going to stitch around the arm. I'm going to start here, so all the way around and stop here, and I'm gonna leave this section open and I'm going to sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once the arm's been sewn, go ahead and clip the curves. Take care not to clip the section that you're going to be slip stitching. Turn the arms right side out. We're now going to stuff the arms. Make sure to fluff your polyfill first. Next, we're going to slip stitch this opening closed. You'll want to make sure that you use a coordinating thread because this will be visible. Tie the knot for your doll. Go ahead and tie a knot at the seam as usual by looping through your thread. I like to do a knot about twice just to make sure it's pretty strong. Insert the needle back into the seam at roughly the same spot as your knot and go out the side of the plush. Pull. and clip the thread. And now you don't have to worry about your knot strings being visible. So repeat this process with the other arm. I'm ready to stuff the doll. Now, this doesn't look like that big of a space, but it actually does take quite a bit of time and stuffing to fill. So make sure you have plenty of polyfill and turn your doll upside down. We're going to stuff through the opening here by the legs and I'm going to start just with small pieces. Make sure your polyfill is fluffed. And I'm going to stuff down at the bottom of the head first. And as I stuff, I'm going to run my hemostats or whatever your stuffing tool is along the edge of this seam. Not too hard, you don't want to poke a hole, but 
enough to help make sure that that seam is worked out. I want the stuffing to create a nice shape, so I wanna make sure the seams are all the way out to help do that. So I'm going to stuff the head until it's mostly full. And you'll notice that I usually cup the object with my hand. Uh, that's because it allows me to feel how much stuffing is in there. It also helps me to guide the placement. Also take care, make sure your stuffing's going in the doll, not up and out the dress. I've done that a few times. Take note of the shape of the head as you fill. You shouldn't have a whole lot of dips and indents. If you do, it means it can still take quite a bit more stuffing. This does need to be firmly packed. Uh, if it's not firmly packed, the head will be really floppy which if that's what you're going for, it's not a problem, but I have found um, with the amount of hair that I like to attach to the doll, I need it to be much sturdier. I still have some fluff that I want to add to the face. I think I can work out some more of these kinks, which I'm going to do. But there's one other thing that you can add as well. Um, I like to add an awful lot of hair to my doll. Um, and as a result, the head becomes quite heavy. To stabilize the head and to make it sturdier, I like to add a craft stick. So this is optional, you, can, you don't have to use this, but if you'd like to, you can. Um, I don't know if I would recommend this uh, if you're planning to have this go to a small child because it could break and create splinters um, and we wouldn't want anything to pose a danger to anyone. So uh, take care if you do decide to use this. I would recommend it if it's going to be um, a display or just for fun but um, I don't know if I'd recommend this for a toy at all. So I'd like my head to be more stable, so I'm going to take my craft stick and I'm going to insert it about like this. I want about half of the craft stick to lay below the head and about half of the craft stick to be above the head and I want it to be inserted in the middle of my polyfill. So after I put this in, I'm gonna stuff above and below the stick. You can also add this after if you prefer. Make sure that it's not visible on the front of your doll. And you do want to peri periodically check um, the front as well. You want to make sure that your stuffing looks good uh, on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead, try and work out some of these kinks, and then I'll come back. I now have my doll head stuffed pretty much how I want it. Um, this did take me probably another 15 minutes or so. So getting that nice shape, preventing a lot of those crinkles, it doesn't just happen. It does take quite a bit of time. Uh, so I used to think, that it would just happen, you just automatically get a nice shape, but that's not the case. It does just take a lot of time, it does take a lot of patience, and a whole lot of polyfill uh, to get that nice shape. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm gonna keep filling the body, and I'll come back. My doll is now stuffed the way I'd like it, and so I'm ready to close my opening. So if I go to the bottom of the body, and I have drawn myself my little stitch guide there, and so I'm just going to slip stitch, I'm just going to slip stitch this section closed. So I'm gonna fold my fabric under at my stitch line and do a slip stitch to hold it together. 
This can be a little tricky to slip stitch, so I do like to go in small sections. Um, and if you've marked the bottom center of the body piece, it should match up in the center of the legs, so that can be a good guide point uh, to make sure that you're stitching in the correct place. So I'm just gonna do a little slip stitch. Let's add the arm to the doll. First, make sure to find the shoulder. The shoulder is the skinny part and the arm is angling towards the front. So if you look at the curve, this side would be the front of the arm. Make sure that the dress seam aligns with the side seam of the doll and place the arm down on it. I like the top of the arm to, to touch about the seam of the dress and we're going to attach the arm. So I like to begin by just doing a stitch about a quarter of an inch below the top and I like to slide my needle through the loop of the double thread. This gives it just a secure knot there at the top of the arm. Then we're just going to whip stitch this in place. So I'm going to line it back with the side of the doll. And my thread is now coming out of the side of the arm. And I'm going to do a stitch through the doll body from the front to the back about a quarter of an inch long. Now you wanna make sure that you're not just going through the dress, you're going to be going through the dress and the doll fabric. And pull it snug so that a lot, the arm aligns with that side seam on, on the dress. Go back up through the arm and out through the front and then down through the doll again and back out the seam. Again, make sure that you're going through the doll fabric as well as the dress fabric. And I like to do this several times until the arm feels secure. This arm feels really secure when I feel like I've got it where I want it. You can either tie a knot or making sure my dress is in position. You can slide the needle through to the other side. Just take care you don't want to lose the needle in the middle of the doll, which is why doll needles are really nice. But you can just pull it out through the other side of the doll and attach the other arm in the same manner. Make sure it's pointing the right direction. Make sure that the arms are even. When both arms are securely attached, tie a good strong knot. And the arms are now attached to the body. There's one last step that we can do to prepare the body of the doll, and this is optional, but if you would like to, 
uh, you can add blush. I'm just using regular old makeup, so actual blush. Um, I've also seen people use chalk pastels. Uh, this is something you may want to practice first because you can't really change it once it's on your doll. Our doll is now complete of everything except the hair. So stay tuned for my next video in which I'll show you how to add hair to your rag doll.